Hi, my name is Luis Perdomo, and I rock jazz. Okay, I'm originally from Caracas, Venezuela, but I'm actually based in New York. I'm a freelance uh, jazz pianist. I began um, playing jazz at the age of, I think, 12, and um, I was very much influenced by um, my father's uh, record um, collection. And um, ever since, you know, I can remember, I've been listening to jazz and trying to play this music and listening to people like Oscar Peterson and Bud Powell and uh, Bobby Timmons and um, Dizzy Gillespie and Cannibal, just to name a few. I've been very lucky to have played with a whole bunch of um, musicians who I very much admire, like um, John Paritucci, um, Miguel Zanon, uh, the great Ray Barreto, who I pretty much grew up listening to. Also, uh, Ray, um, Robbie Coltrane, and um, Jerry Gonzalez and the Fort Apache Band, David Sanchez, just to name a few. Okay, my big break um, playing music and playing with some of these artists, it was very gradual, actually. I didn't, uh, I don't consider that I had, had a big break. It was like more of a gradual thing. I'm not really that good at um, marketing myself, especially back in the days, you know, when I first came to New York. So basically, I just, um, I, I got lucky, you know, basically, and I was at the right place and at the right time, and I actually work hard on people's music, and I try to be the best sideman ever, you know, and also um, just to bring the music to the best possible um, uh, way that it can be, you know, just make the music the best, you know, um, in any occasion. It didn't happen in a club or in a, any musical situation like that. It actually happened in a classroom when I was uh, a student of the great Sir Roland Hanna. Um, I was actually just playing some tune uh, right before my lesson and uh, just warming up and just trying to be ready for when uh, Roland came in. And eventually he came in and he will say, he heard me play and he was like, oh man, that, that sounds great. Um, yeah, I know you have no problem playing um, you know, these complicated um, forms or all this stuff. Play me, play me a ballad. So I was like, oh, okay, cool. Uh, I'm gonna play, I think it was, I fall in love too easily. And he was like, okay, well, play it. Um, do you know the lyrics? And I was like, yes, I know the lyrics. You know, I was kind of feeling like, you know, I'm prepared for this. So right away he was like, okay, go ahead. And when I was about to play, he was okay, play the first A, um, I mean the first um, part of the song, play it in the key of A major, and, and then I want you to transition to some key, I don't know, E flat for the solo. And then for the last part of the song, transition to a different key. And right away I was like, okay, you know. <laughs> and uh, you know, the lesson that I got from that is that, um, or what he was trying to teach me is that he, you know, he didn't really care for the stuff that I could play real well. He just wanted me to, um, he was looking for um, weak points in my playing and then focusing on that. But the result of it is that he never really heard me play my best. You know, every time that he heard me play, I was, you know, like, it was something that I needed to work on. And uh, every time after my lessons, I came out like feeling like, oh my God, like, I, I, I suck. But you know, like I realized years later that a, a lot of the improvement that I did was, you know, thank, thanks to um, you know that way of teaching of Roland Hanna, Sir Roland Hanna. Um, you know, the state of uh, jazz right now and some of the influences that seem to be taking it away from its roots. I think time will tell. You know uh, how important those influences are gonna be in, um, you know, just making this music uh, richer. Um, especially talking about like stuff like uh, playing in odd meters, which I don't, I don't really consider it to be odd, you know. It's just something that people haven't really done and, and, and they're not really used to 
hearing or playing, you know. Um, I guess it was the same back in the day, you know, when um, Dizzy Gillespie and Charlie Parker began playing, um, you know, the music that was called bebop. Um, it was very, uh, they were playing a lot of notes and uh, very fast. It wasn't danceable anymore. And, you know, I, I read and actually spoken to people that um, they said that a lot of people were mad at them because um, they were saying that this, the music was becoming like a circus. But then years later, people understood what they were doing. Same thing with um, John Coltrane and Eric Dolphy. They were calling the music that they were doing and the style that they were playing, like exercises and that kind of stuff. And then years later, people understood what that was. I think it's going to be the same with um, you know, some of these other influences that jazz is uh, getting these days. And, um, you know, like odd meters. You know. Like if you talk to somebody from, I don't know, from Greece, and you tell them about odd meters, they're not gonna think it's really odd because that's, you know, their music is, you know, contains this um, so-called odd meters, you know. So, you know, it's just time will tell about that. Uh, crossing jazz with other styles, um, you know, I've, it's not really necessary, but at the same time, it's, you know, it's, um, it's something that is good, you know, just to, have a different approach to, um, you know, the music that you, you know, you're playing. And um, I actually I enjoy very much um, the, uh, the experiments that uh, Robert Glasper are doing, people like um, Miguel Zenon, people like Rudresh Manhattapa, Vijay Ayer. I, you know, pretty much very, um, I like it a lot and, you know, I listen to it all the time, you know, as much as I can. Okay, I have a, a new album entitled Universal Mind. It, it came out on, in, in digital form on, on February 14th of 2012, and it's coming out in physical form on April 24th. And it's a recording that I'm very, very proud of um, because it features my um, band mate in Robbie Coltrane's quartet, um, the great bassist Drew Gress, and also uh, one of my heroes from, you know, um, ever, ever since I started uh, basically listening to jazz and ever since I heard him, I've been um, a fan of the great drummer Jack Dijonet. And um, it's a recording that has been getting a lot of um, very, very good um, press, you know, with the people and with the media and musicians. And I'm quite actually very overwhelmed by the, um, you know, all the responses that, you know, it's been getting. I usually don't get that many positive responses, you know, about my records, you know, because I actually try to, I waited a long time to do a record as a leader, you know, because I just wanted to just put whatever was in my head on the tape, you know. And um, I waited a long time until I found a producer who actually allowed me to do that. The producer on this record is actually Ravi Coltrane, and he's also the producer on my first um, CD, um, which is called Focus Point, and it came out uh, about seven years ago. And um, so, yeah, I'm very, very proud about this record, and I hope uh, you enjoy it, and um, yeah. Well, um, being a band leader is, is a very different um, animal, you know. It's a lot more responsibility. And that was something that, I don't know, for some reason, I, I think um, unconsciously I was avoiding just because, of, you know, I've worked with a lot of bands and um, I've seen what happens, you know, on the road, all the stuff that you need to take care of that is not necessarily musically related. And it takes a long, you know, a lot of a lot of your time and energy, and uh, I was basically just um, focused on just making music and, and you know making the best of um, every situation. And now I actually just came back from Europe um, with my own uh, band, and it was something that I actually really really enjoyed. You know, uh, of course, I mean, I, I'm a lot older right now than you know when I used to think that. I just didn't want to be a band leader, and uh, but it's something I think you gotta have a a balance, 
you know, between being a band leader and being a sideman. Because being a real good band leader makes you be a better sideman, and being a real good sideman make, makes you be a better band leader. And, um, you know, it's just good to have both um, point of views. Okay. <laughs>